All right, so here we're going to look at error bounds for the midpoint rule. I'll have three different examples. Each one of them will have their own video. Uh, yeah, on here I've got uh, the trapezoidal and midpoint. They're similar. So suppose the second derivative, the absolute value of second derivative, is less than or equal to k when x is between a and b. And if the error of the midpoint rule, E sub m, this right here is for the trapezoidal, okay, so basically if E sub t and E sub n or m are the errors in the trapezoidal and midpoint rules, we're just looking at the midpoint, then the absolute value of E sub m is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed over 24 n squared. You can see they're pretty much the same. We got 12 here, 24 here. So they're going to be similar. So <clears throat> let's look at the example. All right, so let's take a look at example three. Uh, they want us to find how large should we take n in order to guarantee that the midpoint rule approximation for the integral e to the 1 over x dx from 1 to 2 is accurate to within point zero 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 one. Alright, so as you saw before, we need to solve for n here. And here's the absolute value e sub m is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed over 24n squared. All right, so we know a and b. That's the limits on our integral. And we've got to solve for n, so that means we have to find k. Now, in these problems, k can be one of the more difficult problems to solve. Uh, k can be one of the more difficult variables to find. Sometimes it's easy to find. Sometimes it's a little more difficult. All right, so to do this, well, remember it's the absolute value of the second derivative is less than or equal to k. So we need to figure out what the second derivative is. So let's go ahead and do that. So our function, our f of x, is equal to e to the 1 over x. And we need to find the second derivative. So f prime of x is equal to, well, the derivative of e to a power is just e to that power and then times the derivative of the exponent. Well, the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. You remember how to do that? 1 over x, well, that's the same thing as x to the negative 1. So if I, if I take the derivative of this, well, that's just the power rule. So that's negative 1x subtract 1, and then move this down to the denominator. So that t makes it, for, that goes from x to the negative 2 to x to the positive 2. And so that's where this derivative comes from. All right, so now I need to take the derivative of this using the chain rule. But before I do that, I'm going to actually rewrite it. I'm going to write this as negative x to the negative 2 move this up e to the 1 over x all right so let's let's use the product rule now earlier I don't know if I said chain rule or product rule if I said chain rule I meant product rule so we've got to use the product rule here all right so remember the product rule that's the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first function and so the derivative of the first function, that's 2x to the negative 3. The negative 2 comes down, subtract 1, times the second function, plus the derivative of the second function. Well, the derivative e to the 1 over x, well, we actually did that from here to here. Okay, So that's going to be e to the 1 over x times negative 1 over x squared and then times the first function. But what I'm going to do, instead of writing that first function like this, I'm going to actually just write it like this. Okay, Remember, these are the same thing. 
So that's times negative 1 over x squared. So this is going to give me f double prime of x is equal to, so this is going to be 2 over x cubed e to the 1 over x. I just brought that down to the denominator. And then the negative and negative, that's plus 1 over x to the 4th times e to the 1 over x. And then what I'll do here, f double prime of x, I'm going to go ahead and factor out at e, this e to the 1 over x. Uh, a lot of times when you're working problems, it's good to, if you have e to a power and you have a common factor, a lot of times it's good to uh, factor that e out. Maybe not every time, but most of the time it's, you know, it just makes it easier to look at. All right, so now we've got the second derivative. So now we've got to figure out what k is. We've got to figure out this thing right here, because see, this is the second derivative. Well, the absolute value of this, this is less than or equal to, well, what number? Okay, well, let's figure that out. Well, we know we're on the interval from 1 to 2, right? We're on the interval 1 to 2. So let's look at this. As we go from 1 to 2, what is the second derivative doing? Well, f double prime of x on this interval 1 to 2, well, let's see. As I plug in numbers from 1 to 2 in here for x, as I go from 1 to 2, this e to the 1 over x is getting smaller and smaller. It's decreasing. And notice these values are too. See, because these x values are in the denominator, and as I go from 1 to 2, x is getting larger and larger. So that means all of these fractions here are decreasing. So that means this whole thing is decreasing. So f double prime on this interval 1 to 2 is decreasing. Okay. So this is going to be largest when x is equal to 1. So we're going to let x equal 1 to find out what k is. All right. So let's come down here and work that out. So I've got absolute f double prime of x. Let me draw a little line here, separate it. All right. So this is equal to e to the 1 over x times 2 over x cubed plus 1 over x to the fourth. Okay. Now you might be thinking, well, why aren't you putting the absolute value? Well, I could, but I don't need to because this thing's going to be positive. Because what numbers am I putting in? I'm putting in numbers from 1 to 2. And so everything it's always going to be positive. <clears throat> All right, so this is less than or equal to e to the 1 over, and what am I plugging in for x? I'm putting in 1, because that's when this is going to be largest. So that's 1 over 2, 1 cubed, plus 1 over 1 to the 4th. So this in here is 2 plus 1, which is 3, and that's just e, so this is 3e. Okay, so this f double prime of x is less than or equal to 3e. And see up here, f double prime of x is less than or equal to k. So in this case, k is 3e. So we have k is equal to 3e. And now we plug k in, a and b and then we can solve for n. All right, so what we have here is we have, I'm sorry, we've got 3e times 2 minus 1 cubed over 24n squared. All right, now, what did what do we want this to be less than or equal to? Well, 
we want it to be less than or equal to 0 0.0001. So this is less than or equal to 0 0.0001. And now we just solve for n. So the n comes up here, the 0 0.0001 comes to the denominator. So this is 3e, because this is 1 cubed, over 24 times 0 0.0001 less than or equal to n squared and so now I get the square root of 3e over 24 times 0 0.0001 is less than or equal to n I just took the square root of both sides okay so that gives me n is greater than or equal to 58.3 all right and so that means n needs to be what 59 in order to be accurate to within the point zero 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 one all right so check out the other videos uh, give me a like share and subscribe and thanks for watching